everybody, it's Tyler here at the Speedway Signature event. Check in, it's Space Pandas 884A coming in out of California, having a phenomenal performance so far as we're filming early in this competition, but a lot of great stuff. Really one of the key aspects is their intake. We'll be diving more into how that works so far. We'll talk about a lot of our great things too, maybe some feature plans we're doing, sensors on the robot, and a lot more to learn from this team. So let's find out more about them from up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Reese, let's start talking about the intake. Uh, you and Charlotte, you know, you're the whole team. You put in so much in this. We were talking earlier that you're a garage team just working out at. I love the whole vibe that goes into it. So let's start talking about your intake and we'll kind of work our way up through different aspects of this robot. Yeah, okay. So let's just talk about some random little interesting things about our intake. So um, first thing you might notice is we have a very steep intake. I think it's like 50 degrees or something. So, um, I mean, what that allows us to do is shrink our robot down a lot. So it's very short in length. And what that allows us to do is um, not only make our robot more maneuverable since it's smaller, but we're also able to add in a lot of other important functions. So we have our um, wall seg mechanism, and since our robot is so short, during our autons, we're able to like start off with scoring on the alliance stake within like the first second of autons. And that's because our robot is short enough that our alliance stake mechanism is able to fit within size. So that's a very big strategical uh, advantage for us. And some other ways that we shrink our robot, just to briefly go over, we have like our drivetrain at like the shortest possible. I think it's 25 long with just the C-channel and then plus this funnel, maybe 28 long. So that's some other ways we make our robot lighter and more maneuverable. And then some other interesting parts, um, because our intake ramp is so steep, we used to have issues with dead zones at the bottom of our intake when we were trying to get a ring up. So what we did is we added these additional two sets of wheels on our um, intake sled. And what that does is, you know, with the combined force of um, these upper flex wheels and the lower ones, we're able to pull the ring up more effectively. And then um, another really unique part, we have a lower tier that can actually lift all the way up. Um, what we use this for, for one right now, is when we're doing autons, sometimes we want to be able to get that top ring on the stack, and we're able to lift our intake and just grab that top one. And then... Actually, the other thing that we use this lift for is um, we're actually planning on implementing a three-tier climb. So what this does is when we're climbing, we're able to lift it up, and that way our robot can you know, press more flat against the ladder, basically. And if you want to go more into that, actually. So adding on, so about the intake, another really cool aspect of our intake is actually at the very top, we can see right here in our intake, um, our intake, it may be a uh, roller intake, but we still have a color sorter. So at the very top, you can see, we can actually get a zoom in of the polycarb right here, but our uh, ramp at the very top is double layered. There's two pieces of polycarb, and it's holding in this one piece of polycarb in the middle, and that's powered by a piston. And essentially, whenever we detect our opponent's color coming in through the uh, intake, we can activate this portion of our uh, robot and then it'll um, color sort, and so it'll essentially elongate the ramp, so it goes straight over the goal. We can actually intake um, an opponent's ring right now. Here, Reese, if you want to push the blue ring in. No, just push, yeah. You can see how the uh, polypop are activated, right? That's how we um, color sort. And then moving on, something else that's like <laughs> really special, in my opinion, is how we use the polycarb. So you can see our doinker, there's no C channel or L channel on our doinker at all. So the entire structural support of our doinker, or I mean, whatever you want to call this hood, I guess, is entirely made of polycarb. And this is, keeps it lightweight and very efficient and small and compact. So we don't waste as much space, like, you know, up in there. Did you have any challenges with using polycarb for like structural elements, um, like that as you're experimenting with it or any advice maybe for teams who might want to try mm. doing something like that? Yeah, of course. So. Polycarb, it's really difficult to get accurate, right? And so what we do is, or what we find works a lot of the time is that you can actually get a piece of graph paper and each graph paper or each square on our graph paper is 
half an inch, I think. No, a quarter of an inch. And um, what you can do is that you can scale and draw pieces on the polycarp. And what you do is you can line up the polycarp and you can like kind of trace out a shape. And then from there, it's really easy to hand cut from there because uh, especially because we don't have a lot of like laser cutters in our garage. <laughs> I mean, we have the uh, hand snippers. And so it's really accurate if you like line it up with the graph paper. I think, I think you just made hole counting for polycarb. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Much, so. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really cool. You know, looking at your robot, we talked about like, you know, looking at doing a level three climb in the future as well. Any other feature improvements you might look at doing? Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I know like we talked a little bit about the level three climb, but essentially what we also want to try and do is we want to make our robot like shorter as well because um, we want to implement either like a passive level one hang or a really cool like 10 second level level three hang. But as our robot is like a little bit taller. It's like under the first tier. So it's not really easy to activate something to um, hook on at the very top because like we're essentially a little too close. So I do want to focus on like maybe compacting our robot even more, even though we're at like the minimum length for length right now. Uh, I want to focus more on the uh, height. You have a bunch of sensors on your robot. Are there a couple key ones you want to point out and how they're functioning? Yeah, so we mentioned how we have color sorting on our robot earlier. So how we do that is on our intake ramp, we have two optical sensors. If you want to point them out. Um, we just have two for redundancy. So when we're intaking a ring up, we're able to detect what color it is. And so um, sometimes we have discrepancies between the two. And so what we do is we just take the data that we get from the top one because it's the most recent. And so that's, you know, allows us to decide whether or not we want to trigger this color sorter. And then... uh, in fact, we can like, we can try holding up um, an opponent's colored ring. And then you can see when, here, if you want to lift up the uh, hood for me. Yeah, no, this, this, the, yeah, the, the antique one. And we can shove it in. You can see when it hits the, the uh, optical sensor, that's what extends our ramp. If we take it out, it'll retract, just like that. And another really cool sensor maybe I want to go into is, oh, yeah our AI sensor. So most teams might think, oh, that's a really interesting place to put it, right? And then, well, for our AI sensor, we actually find in skills especially, it's really useful for um, sensing the wall stakes. And then what this does is essentially we can track the color of the wall stake, right? Especially since the cap is yellow and then it, the uh, lion stake on the other side is blue, and there are colors that we can really easily see against a darker background. And so we have an offset, right? We can code in an offset into our AI uh, auto aim, but this allows us to be a lot more consistent with wall stakes, especially if we get off later in the run, and then we want to just, I don't know, we rec correct a little bit. Like, yeah. So I just want to talk about polycarb again. So you'll notice that we actually use polycarb in a lot of our structural aspects. That's something that you don't see too often, but. Um, we find that you know it's very hard for polycarb to shatter, and it's also very lightweight. So we're able to replace a lot of metal by you know using polycarb for structure. And on areas like our intake, like we have almost entirely polycarb. So we know that this doesn't require like a whole lot of super you know strong structure. So we're like, why don't we you know try to minimize our weight? We take advantage of that. So this is all polycarb for each parts of our intake. Um, yeah. Just just to reiterate what we said, like. You can see our whole arm is polycarb. Um, this has a lot of give, especially since when you ram into the corner, you like, I don't know, we, when we previously had C-channel arms, they bent a lot. But what's really nice about our polycarb arms is I can shake it as much as I want. And it'll always go back to the same spot. So it has like a lot of give, essentially. And then I think that's what we're looking for because it's a lot more uh, robust too. And then last thing, oh yeah. For all the teams who are like kind of looking at um, intakes and like the polycarb, one really cool thing that you can do is you can sand down the polycarb and it allows for a smoother intake because it's uh, less friction. So yeah, it was a little cool little thing. Yeah, I love all the detail and thought <laughs> yeah. process that's gone into it. Uh, 884A Space Pandas once again. Thank you so much for taking time. Lots of, I think teams can learn from this. So that's awesome stuff to showcase the community. Best of luck here at uh, Speedway as well. Can't wait to see how you're doing. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a Thank lot. You. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more.
To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.